Hey there, it's John with Excel Campus and in this video I'm going to share a tip for improving performance with your Excel tables. So the tip here is to not use whole column references when you're creating tables. And I stumbled upon this by really making a mistake, a, a bit of a bonehead move here. When I was creating a table, I should have known better, but I did accidentally use a whole column reference and that can really slow down the performance of your tables. Now, if you don't know what a whole column reference is, uh, don't worry, I'm going to explain that in this video. The video will also be packed with a bunch of tips and tricks for working with tables and ranges. So I'm sure you'll find a lot of value in it. So let's jump right in here. And this is the table that I'm having an issue with. Now this table is only 250 rows long and seven columns wide, and it does not contain any formulas. So it's a really relatively small table. The performance issue that I'm experiencing is if I go over here and try and scroll vertically on this sheet, it's slow. As you can see, I'm scrolling down here, but it's slow. It kind of glitches or lags a little bit here. Same thing if I use the mouse wheel, I'm scrolling with the mouse. It takes a few extra seconds to respond. And then if I go to a different sheet, and then I'm going to click back to the sheet, I'll click it right now. And as you can see, it took a second or two to actually load up the sheet here and display the table. The reason this is happening is because I used a whole column reference when I created the table. So let's look at what that means and I'll walk through how I created the table and uh, made the mistake. So I'm going to go over to this raw data sheet. And what I originally did was I pasted some data into this workbook from another workbook and I just pasted the values here. So it looked just like this. And the first thing I wanted to do was uh, expand each column so I could read the data within it. So to do that, I'm just going to select or I selected all of the columns here, selected these columns. And then as you may or may not know, if you scroll your mouse uh, cursor to the middle of the column there until it turns into that vertical bar with the arrows, at that point, you can double click here and that's going to auto fit all of the columns you have selected so you can see all of the contents within each column. It's a great tip and technique uh, to know. Now, at this point, I also wanted to create an Excel table. So I went ahead and did that. I can do that from the home tab or you can do that from the insert tab. I went home tab here, format as table. And then I went over here and applied this uh, light gray and I usually just right click applying clear formatting. So it'll clear any addition existing formatting there. And the create table window comes up here. And as you can see, this is a whole column reference. And what that means is the reference is referencing all of the rows in the sheet. You don't see any row numbers here. It's just column A through column G. So that's including all of the rows on the sheet. With the typical reference, you'll see row numbers there as well. So if I just select some cells here, you see now it's C4 to F12. That's a typical reference where you have row numbers. But since I originally selected all the columns to auto fit them and I did not change the selection, I just had A to G selected, which is again that whole column reference. And then at this point, I just hit OK or hit Enter. I didn't notice that there. Hit OK. That's going to create the table. And when you first see it, you don't think that there's anything wrong here. But as you start to go over here and scroll, uh, you'll notice that it's, the scrolling is really slow. Now, one thing you'll notice right now is that the scroll bar here, this little vertical scroll bar is really small. And that's a, usually a red flag that kind of denotes that there might be some used cell way down towards the bottom of the sheet uh, that might be causing an issue, might cause some performance issues because Excel thinks there's a lot of used cells on this sheet. So that's one issue here. And if we scroll all the way to the bottom, you can see that the table here ends right here. It's kind of hard to see because I use that light gray table style. So it's a bit difficult to see, but our table extends all the way down here to the last row on the sheet, 1,048,000. Now, one other issue to note here is if we scroll up again, and I said that this scroll bar is really small, and that usually is something that will be a red flag. However, if we save the workbook right now, that vertical scroll bar changes to kind of its normal size. Now, if I scroll to the bottom, it's only going to go to the bottom of the used range, which is again, row 250 here. So it's only going to scroll down to here and not go below that. So if, if you save right away, you have auto save on, you might not even notice uh, that potential scroll bar issue. So if you have uh, this problem and some performance issues here, it's relatively easy to fix. So let's first take a look at how to do that, how to fix this. 
And to do that, we're just going to select any cell inside the table here. You can even jump up to the top, hit control up arrow to jump up to the top. Just select any cell inside the table. And then we're going to go to the table design tab here. And we're going to click the resize table button. And that'll again open this window. You'll see our whole column reference here. And we just need to change this to reference the used range. And we can do that by selecting the top left cell in the table. In this case, it's A1. And I'm going to hold the Control and Shift key and press the End key. So Control Shift End is the keyboard shortcut to select all the cells here, the used range, which is A1 to G251. And now we'll go ahead and hit OK. That will resize our table. And now if we go over here and uh, scroll, you can see the scroll is really smooth now. It works just like it should. Uh, same thing if we use the uh, mouse wheel to scroll. It's real nice and smooth. We can go over to another sheet here and come back. And everything is performing like it should very, very, very quickly. So that's how to fix that. Now I also want to share a tip on how to create tables uh, so you don't make this mistake in the future. So I'm going to go over to this sheet here. And uh, really, the tip is to just select one single cell before creating the table. Uh, and, and when I originally created that table, I had all of the columns selected here. And you can see that because when you select columns, the headers uh, turn this light green color up here. So that lets you know the entire column is selected. So of course, you want to make sure you don't have the entire column selected. But when creating a table, you can actually just select a single cell inside the range here. And then again, we'll go Home tab, Format as Table. And I'm going to uh, apply and clear formatting on that light gray uh, table style. Here you'll see now that Excel has automatically detected the used range for me. So I just selected one cell. Excel found the used range, referenced it here. And all we need to do is press OK and the table will be created. And of course, the performance again will be really good here because the table is only going down to row 251, as we can see right here, and nowhere below it. So that's some tips there for preventing this uh, mistake and potential performance issues with your tables. Of course, if you have any other questions or suggestions about tables and table performance, feel free to leave a comment right below this video. If you've enjoyed this video, please subscribe to our channel. Also head over to excelcampus.com slash free and join our free weekly email newsletter where we ship, share tips and tricks to help you master Excel. Thanks again for watching. Have a great day and I'll see you in the next video.